If you have an ankle injury and you are wishing to participate in a TRE practice intending on incorporating as many of the preliminary exercises as possible, here are some ideas for you. You are welcome, instead of the very first exercise where you would rock side to side from the edge of one foot, inner edge, outer edge of the other, to the other side. That will put pressure at varying angles that the ankle just might not take up uh, comfortably. And so sitting at a chair is possible. And as you do, you can allow maybe uh, one foot to do that inversion, eversion, moving the leg as a unit, but focusing more on the ankle. What you can do for the ankle that is injured or uh, compromised is to simply massage and allow a little bit of uh, pressure from the sake of massage from one side to the other. If in this non-weight bearing way, it is comfortable to practice inversion and eversion, you sure can do that. The idea behind those seven exercises is grounding. This first exercise is giving the nervous system a chance to understand it's your position relative to the floor, relative to gravity, yeah? So that is the importance. And then working from the feet up toward the um, psoas, toward the deeper hip flexors, is another reasoning for those exercises to really open the front of the pelvis um, and then to stimulate all of the spine with articulation in general. So here you could take from a wonderful uh, yogic practice of lacing the fingers to the toes and letting the hand passively um, guide that foot through inversion and eversion, really stretching the frame of the foot. It's just an idea as your feet have one fourth of all the bones in your body, the articulating and connectivity, uh, the articulations within and the connectivity to the rest of your body is very important, but uh, the movement of the ankle needs to not cause you further injury. The second exercise has more than one option. One is that we, again, open the front of the hip while we take on this ankle lifting and lowering of the heel. That is just one way. Another way is to stand with one foot in front of the other and lift and lower the heel. That is less weight bearing. We can affect both at the same time, potentially, but with an ankle injury, that is not always a comfortable place. It adds load. So if you feel like going through the range of movement is still possible, then you can sit and aim to do that. But if there is a, a glitchy kind of reaction, if it causes irritation, if there is inflammation, then that is not a good idea. And if you want to stimulate that area again, to have some massage it will only be good. It moves blood through the area. It brings nourishment and uh, removes stagnation and any of these ways of just bringing awareness through sensation would be fantastic. The third exercise um, has its own challenges, originally designed to be a means of dropping the body weight back, hanging the head, and bending from the knee. And so for the ankle that's not affected, if you really like that original exercise, you sure can manage it. If what you can do is that um, warrior one style, dipping down, dropping the pelvis down, 
that keeps the front leg in a stable way and really challenges the back leg and ankle and knee, consider that for the other side, but equally from a seated position, there is resistance without any imposing on the ankle. There is resisting the leg and then uh, extending from the knee and flexing and extending from the ankle. Incorporating both will begin to suffice for this uh, wall sit to a great degree, you'd be surprised. Try to sit at the top of your sitting bones, stay long in your spine, allow the, uh, the, the joints of the knee and the hip to take up the resistance in this work. Equally, you can um, charge, just simply uh, charge the legs to sit and bear down without any uh, bending of the ankle, without any movement, just an isometric kind of load. The folding feet wide can be done from this corner of the chair and folding, letting the arms and head hang, walking to one side and then to the other side. Bearing weight on your feet becomes too much. Then that same uh, positioning and going the other way and turning to continue to open the front of the hip. Turn and look down that elbow and behind, breathe. So, Holding three breaths center, three breaths on each side, three breaths in the center, both the folding exercise and the back bending extension style exercise. This is a great angle and there's not weight bearing. Again, using that same resistance for the wall sit. Another possibility to substitute for the wall sit is a bridging style action. And you might want to save your energy for what will happen from the floor in those timed places, those exercises, to again not irritate the angle at the ankle. All right. So as we get to that forward fold, again, not being on your feet when you come away from the wall sit, there is that forward fold, allowing the head and the arms to hang, swing for a good minute. That is a wonderful way to just allow the continued grounding and the quieting of the nervous system, the um, down regulation of the sympathetic, the up regulation of the parasympathetic. We want to make sure we breathe and we are staying here for a minute. If you want to transition from the, from the chair to the floor and you want a substitute, I would suggest sitting so that your feet have something against them because in all of this, you're beginning to invite the tremor response. And then if you can fold and let your arms and the head hang, what happens when you fold from standing is that you do incorporate a little bit of flexion, but it is borrowing from the idea that when you fold, and especially when your head gets to hang or to rest comfortably, then that begins to, again, upregulate the parasympathetic system. And you can tell that the mind quiets and the body quiets, and it lends itself to inviting the tremor response. And then you're already at the floor and you are ready for the next steps. I want to give you some ideas in case you need a variety of ways to accommodate an ankle from the floor exercises. Using a pillow to adjust angles or a block would be great. So initially, if what you are doing is to recline in this butterfly position where the knees drop away from each other and the soles of the feet are together and we want to stay here for a minute. If the pressure at the ankle is not comfortable, 
then you want to change the angle and you want to soften the surface. We can do that in more than one way. We can put a pillow or a blanket under the ankle. But if where the pressure is needs a little bit of attention to changing how the leg gets to be in a relaxed way, while the feet get to stay uh, against a surface. So I could wrap the foot and I could still rest my other foot and hold it. And I've just really changed both the angle and the support around the ankle. I want this place to be passive. This is a resting place. And I want to show that from another angle just so that you can see uh, it really supports the structure. I took a blanket and I wrapped the blanket around and it feels really good on my ankle. And I can take the other foot and set it against and maneuver with the size of your blanket, the size of whatever you have, but just notice the support of the ankle and that the other foot has the chance to hold on to a closed chain position. When you recline then, and you need to go to the next exercise, which is to lift the pelvis, the other leg, the uninjured ankle, gets to do most of the work to help lift the weight of the body. So I'll show you from this angle now. That though I had this blanket that changed or allows me to change and support whatever needs to be, I can bear into the floor with the other leg. And this one kind of gets to go along for the ride and both sides get to open from the front. And we don't need to stay long, but there is yet another way. And that other way is to stay and give effort within the alignment as if you want to lift. What you'll find is that you, know, you might do a little bit of a pelvic tilt. You'll find all the same engagement through the midsection of the body. You will be connected to your core while the front of the hips are opening. And you can easily do this without holding your breath. So that is yet another accessible way that does not impose on structure. Then we come down and we rest again. And then we are ready to lift the knees an inch. And it used to be that we would guide lifting two inches and then two inches again and then two inches again. And sometimes people took that to be, you know, like a whole lot. And it's really not a great range of movement. So it is part of the practice now to suggest just an inch, just to help us appreciate the subtleties of change and how we are using this set of angles to invite a tremor response. You might find in any of these places that your body begins to tremor. Just breathe, allow your curiosity to carry you into this experience with this open mind that invites the TRE practice to serve its purpose releasing tension, anxiety, the hidden memories in our body, and leaving us feeling a little bit lighter along the way. You will equally find that transitioning to feet on the floor might be a way to have a resting place where Instead of knees wide, you have feet wider than your hips and your knees resting against each other. And then your practice will be taking your knees an inch or two away and keeping that position. You're welcome to change where your feet are relative to your knees, meaning further ahead, uh, out further, closer in but then you'll shift position to drawing your knees away from each other. And you'll do that 
three times exploring three different angles at least. What I want you to consider if this is the resting place you work from instead of the Bhadakanasana, the butterfly pose position, is that if it does not feel good for an ankle, again, your pillow or your blanket would be very useful and anything around you will give you a solid place to not have to push from, but to adjust the angle. So if what I decided to do was to use this blanket and I fold it and I put it against this cabinet, it could be against the wall. I could have backed it up and put it at the chair, but the chair will slide where it is right here. And I can keep the soft surface underneath. I could even keep this wrapped up to feel like the ankle is really supported while the other one provides me Again, a different set of soft structures to, to adjust an angle. My sole of the foot is resting against the surface. It feels really nicely supported now, and I can adjust my body and the other leg and the knee and the turnout and have what I need, keeping this safe and erasing a little bit of apprehension from my mind that my practice might negatively affect this injury. I want you to find that any amount of apprehension will take away from your experience. And what we really want from our TRE experience is for the body to remember it as a positive experience so that coming time and again to this practice remains a positive memory and opens the door to continued positive experiences in your TRE practice. There are always ways to improvise. And when you are injured, you must remember uh, to, to discern when it is time to rest an area, how you want to support it, but to recognize that your TRE practice has great value in your healing and your recovery. So how we support an injured area that keeps us from um, hampering healing, but instead uh, supporting healing and becomes unique to each person and each injury and each setting and each practice. This is your practice. And to maintain consistency helps you to continue understanding the myriad of ways that it is going to serve you. Keep sharing about TRE, keep sharing this with others. I look forward to meeting you on your mat and helping you with this continued practice Sharing what we have a passion for is projecting the positive outcomes of our collective good. Thank you for joining me today. Enjoy your practice.